Right now I would like to tell you about a feature we call Smart GPS and this feature is a battery life extending feature that will increase the battery life of a collar without increasing its weight and without you having to sacrifice any data. And the way it works is there's an accelerometer in the device, a three axis accelerometer that informs the microprocessor regarding movement that has been recorded since the last GPS schedule. I should, I should clarify that the movement data is not actually recorded. It's, it's only kept track of by the microprocessor to let it know what to do the next time a GPS attempt is scheduled. So you will set this up before deploying so that unless an animal moves a certain amount between GPS location attempts, the next scheduled location attempt won't occur because you're going to assume the animal hasn't moved. Now, whether that means he's a kind of animal that's underground, like a rabbit, and he might rest underground, there's no GPS signals to penetrate to the collar, so you wouldn't get data anyway, or you just don't need data if there's no movement from the last position. So you're going to set up some parameters that will guide the microprocessor in uh, making that decision. So I'm gonna give you an example. Let's assume that you have a collar that you have scheduled GPS location attempts at 3, 5, 7, 9, 18, 20, and 2300 hours. Okay, let's say that um, you set, you're going to set an arbitrary number that represents movement intensity. Let's call that number 25. This number is arbitrary right now, but you can actually view what number is recorded based on movement and you do that by plugging in the collar to the computer with a USB cable you can move the collar in your hand and see on the screen what what numbers pop up so let's let's just use 25 and then you're also going to you're going to indicate some number of instances of that activity intensity that have to be exceeded for the next GPS attempt to actually occur. So we'll call it 10. So what you're saying here is, GPS comes on at 3 a.m., takes a, a GPS location, and in the time between three and five, that animal has to have movement that is at least as intense as whatever's represented by this number, and it has to occur at least this number of times. If that's the case, that scheduled GPS attempt will occur. If that isn't the case, that will be skipped. If it's skipped, then the counter may or may not reset to zero. That's your choice. You're going to set that too. So the counter started back here and he was counting. Let's say he only got up to five times. Next GPS attempt time arrives and oh, it's only five times. So we skip, but then what do we do? Do we let the counter continue to accumulate these instances so it can say by this time maybe it's at nine and then right before seven it gets to ten then it's going to turn on and it's going to take a gps that's the safe way to do it allow the counter to continue to accumulate since back here the risky way is to reset it every time a scheduled gps attempt should be there regardless of whether it was skipped or not i wouldn't do that but you know it's a risk it's a risk uh reward type situation. You could, In the beginning, at least, I wouldn't do it. After you get used to these settings and you deploy and you get collars back, you can see, you can learn, and, and then you can take that chance. Now, there's, there's one other thing that you can do to prevent yourself, and that is that we have a setting that allows you to say, only skip X number of scheduled positions, and then if you have skipped that many, no, regardless of movement, don't skip the next one. So let's say we had a, a GPS, we had a skip, we had a GPS, and let's say we had a skip here. We had a skip at 1800, and we had a skip over here. What the heck is going on? Maybe, maybe you set your numbers too high. Maybe you, maybe you did, maybe you didn't, who knows. But to protect yourself, you could say, hey, give me, and you have a choice between one and 99, but you could say, only allow three skips, and then regardless, take your GPS, and then you're gonna have your GPS over here. Again, this protects you from not really understanding what these numbers should be set at before you deploy. So 
it does take a few deployments to grasp the optimum numbers, but we try to help you to protect yourself from setting the numbers too high. We don't want you to come back with no data sets. And uh, we call this Smart GPS.